This week on Green Science Oregon. We've been developing what we call bioanalytical tools. The idea is to place these tools or devices out in the environment and get a better estimate of what's bioavailable. Another group of researchers at Oregon State University are discovering how a strain of bacteria found in algae called cyanobacteria produces hydrogen when they're exposed to sunlight. The discoveries being made could lead to unique building materials that connect similarly to solar cells. We'll also visit the Port of Portland's new headquarters at the Portland International Airport. The building is a model for energy conservation, using an assortment of sustainable technologies including the Living Machine System, a wastewater treatment alternative that treats wastewater for reuse in the building's toilets and cooling town. And that's next on Green Science Oregon. We've been developing what we call bioanalytical tools. The idea is to place these tools or devices out in the environment and get a better estimate of what's bioavailable. Because you can measure what's in the environment that oftentimes doesn't correlate well with either the uptake of an organism or what's really available for an exposure, either by an organism or by a human. So the idea is to use these devices to get a better mimic of that um, so that we have a better idea of what the exposure is. So one of those, we have several different types of devices we use and some of those devices we've been deploying like in the Gulf of Mexico or in Portland Harbor Superfund or in various other locations to get a better estimate. This uh, tubing, this is our passive sampling device and it's pre-cleaned in the lab prior to uh, going out in the field. Then when we get in the field, we have to string it up on our uh, deployment devices, which for the water is this deployment spider, and then the um, five spiders go in a deployment cage. So we can place these out. And in the case of some place like the Gulf of Mexico or even Portland Harbor, you can also have um, episodes of contaminants coming through a system. So it's not a continuous, homogenous contaminant load but someone spills something, for example. And so those spills come through at different time points um, as they're migrating through the environment. And so if you have something out like a passive sampler, it can capture that event. So it can capture what we call episodic events um, and sequester. So um, if a tendril of a spill comes through, or in the case of a river, if someone spills something at river and it, and it comes through through the flow, and you have a device out that it can capture that. For the air, we have these air samplers we string the LFT on the inside and then clamp it onto the back, which is mounted on a pillar or a pier, depending on where we want to sample. After we deploy these devices, some of the attributes of the devices is that they um, sequester over a time period. So one of the issues when you're doing environmental um, uh, monitoring is to try to get a better feel for what are those concentrations over some period of time. So if you're living near uh, an area that has some sort of um, contaminants, you want to know what, what that exposure is over that time period. So one of the attributes is that these devices are sequestering, kind of like a sponge, um, over some time period. So that's a better estimate of, of what the exposure is. So they are deployed in the water for a given amount of time and then pulled out and we remove the tubing and uh, clean it in the field to get some of the biofouling off, transport it back to the lab, and then we do some of the processing in the lab to extract the chemicals, uh, concentrate the sample, and analyze it. So we know that, um, that some of these contaminants cause disease, and it's just difficult to try to link what we see in the environment to the disease. What we're trying to do is get closer to understanding what we see in the environment to what we see um, from an exposure. So it's all about actually understanding what is the exposure dose from an environmental contaminant. And we're trying to develop techniques in the lab um, to use in the field to understand what is the exposure dose. At this point in the process, it's a multi-day process, um, uh, of getting the compounds from these passive sampling devices and the that they've sequestered from the environment. We've put solvent into these passive sampling devices or with them in, in a jar for several days 
at this point, what this uh, instrument does or machine does um, is reduce that solvent volume to something that we can work with on the instrument later on. What this does is just heats up. We have uh, just water in the base here and we can um, set our temperature with these gauges right here. And then that heats up our solvent um, and then they evaporate through the top. And so these are two fans that you can set at multiple speeds here. Uh, and then as they, the process continues, depending on how much solvent you might have, it might take an hour, it might take a few minutes, depending on your starting volume. Typically we're starting with about 400 mils. So power is on and our coolant that's gonna run through the double walled glass right here to keep our solvent from evaporating too quickly. Because if you have too much loss, you could actually lose some of your compounds. And we can turn this, this device on and then set our uh, temperature here and set our times. Um, is set at uh, 40 degrees Celsius right there. And then you would take your, uh, your solvent. Uh, typically, we're again starting at about 400 mils. Once I put this down in to the water chamber here, we'll take this. <clears throat> the coolant will be circulating through. It goes on, and then you can push uh, your start time and then it'll begin the process. In this part of the lab, we analyze our samples. Uh, primarily, they come to us uh, from one of the other researchers as a small uh, vial containing a concentrate that uh, we are gonna put on the instrument. And this concentrate is from usually an environmental matrix uh, somewhere that we've collected in our research. We've added surrogate and internal standards that we use to judge how much uh, we recover and the successfulness of our extraction and concentration procedures. So on the instrument, it will inject it into an, into an oven, which is called a GC for gas chromatograph. And this contains a small diameter column and it partitions along the column, which actually separates the different compounds. So we have a mixture, we're separating it into uh, individual compounds and then these individual compounds go through an analyzer and are in some form quantitated. This particular analyzer is a triple quadrupole GCMS. We also have a single quadrupole GCMS, but uh, these instruments uh, can take a essentially a mass to, to a charge fragment and look at them individually and it, it's a much better positive method of identification than some of the older methods. Green Science Oregon is brought to you by Oregon State University, where faculty, students, and research are powered by Orange.